So our next speaker is going to be uh, Frank Schaefer, who has been one of the developers of the Julius IML ecosystem, working on a lot of uh, aspects related to um, neural stochastic differential equations and adjoints of sto uh, stochastic differential equations. And he will be talking about some of his recent work on differential programming for quantum control with uh, SciML. Yeah, thanks for the nice introduction, Chris. Uh, welcome, everyone. So I'm currently at the University of Basel. And as Chris said, right, I want to present to you our differential programming framework for uh, controlling quantum dynamics uh, within the SciML ecosystem. And that specifically means, um, well, using the adjoint sensitivity methods from the DFQ sensitivity package. And while I will fully focus on the quantum control task, actually the, the methodology of the framework will also apply to other kinds of ODE or SDE systems. Now, let me start by quickly motivating or introducing this quantum optimal control setting in a closed system. So suppose for this, you have some Hamiltonian H of T, which can be decomposed into some drift term H naught, which is intrinsic to your physical system at hand and which you cannot um, manipulate. And then you have here this uh, green part, which is your control part, which consists of so-called control operators HK and some control drive values UK of T. And the task in quantum optimal control is then to find these drive amplitudes uk of t such that your Hamiltonian h of t generates some interesting target state which could be relevant for quantum information processing tasks starting from some initial state. And I should probably say so this notation here simply means that this state is like a vector in, in the Hilbert space. And then in the, the case of a closed quantum system, the time evolution is actually given by the Schrödinger equation, which is uh, given here, which is just an, an ordinary differential equation. So which you have to solve starting from the initial condition psi of t0. Then the control task can be um, conveniently reformulated in terms of the minimization of a loss function. And if you want to prepare a target state, um, the infidelity is a very good choice for this loss function. Um, and this is simply here like a scalar product of the state at a given time ti with respect to this target state. And then but this is called the fidelity. And then the infidelity is one minus this, well, basically this overlap, which measures the similarity of the state ti with respect to the target state. And well, this then um, minimization of this function um, achieves that you can reach the target state. And other choices, right, would for example consist of setting here just the, as the loss function the state at the final time point. But the, having here a grid of time points basically um, allows you to prepare the target state also in a time optimal way or like also stabilize the system at, at this state. Now in this talk, we will focus on the, like the smallest possible quantum system, which is just a single quantum bit, so a qubit, um, which is a two level system, right? Which like a two dimensional Hilbert space. So it consists of the excited state and the ground state. And then the general state of this qubit can be written um, in this superposition form. The Hamiltonian for a qubit um, consists then here of this drift term where delta is basically the levels. Um, so the difference in between the eigen energies of these two states and the control term here um, has this Pauli matrix sigma x, which is in this matrix representation below. And this control basically like induces a rotation about the x axis, right? And the drift term would co corresponds to a rotation around the z axis. And note that every quantum state, right, because the full state has to be normalized and the global phase doesn't matter, we actually can represent any state in the system on the surface of um, this so called block sphere. Now, we tackle this control problem then um, um, in the following way. So, we have three main building blocks. We have some parameterized controller, which will be later on always like a neural network. Um, then, we have the, this, some kind of ODE solver, and we have um, a loss function. So which consists of either these fidelity measures from before or also some kind of other constraints like punishing maximal drive amplitudes. Then in a forward pass, we fix um, the parameters of the controller and we start from some arbitrary initial state. The controller is then asked to map the quantum state um, to the next drive value. Then this and this current state enter this kind of ODE solver. So basically the Schrödinger equation is solved. We get the state at the next time point, which enters again the controller. And so on. So we have this kind of closed loop feedback control scheme. And then at some points from, in our case, a uniform time grid, right, we store these, the, the states which enter the, the loss function computation. And well, this is the, the whole forward pass. And how you would actually then approach this 
task in like reinforcement learning or other kind of score function estimators would be to just construct from several forward passes of the simulation uh, some estimate basically of in reinforcement learning of the basically the gradients of the rewards um, with respect to the parameters to update then the controller in a series of epochs. But since we actually well basically know all the terms and implement all of this in terms of a computer program, right? We can also use um, basically sensitivity tools, right? To start from a seed of the loss function values, uh, loss function, and then go all the, the way back through all steps of this kind of computer program, particularly also differentiating this ODE solve, right? To get in the end also this gradient information of the loss function with respect to the parameters. And we, we found, right, that this, um, well, this, this kind of estimation, right, which incorporates the, the model really into the um, computation of this gradient um, gives a much better estimate than reinforcement learning and thus it helps right, to streamline the, this optimization design. Now for the most complicated box, right, so Chris also mentioned this already in his talk, there are actually this, uh, the sensitivity analysis option within the SIML package and they can be roughly divided, I would say, in, into two categories, which are either discrete sensitivities or these kind of continuous sensitivities. And from the discrete sensitivities, you basically divide um, them or can divide them into a forward mode, which however scales poorly with respect to the number of parameters. So it's typically not a good choice if you have a neural network as the controller and reverse mode, which can have quite a huge memory footprint because you have to store or cache quite a lot of intermediate values. And these discrete sensitivities are basically implemented um, as their joint op options uh, were corresponding to the package, right? So corresponding to forward diff, package, reverse diff, zygote, tracker, and so on. And then we have these continuous sensitivities, which basically rely on solving another joint differential equation problem, like an augmented problem backwards in time. And the choices there are basically backsolve adjoint and well, interpolating adjoint also for ODEs, this uh, quadrature joint. Now, as Chris also shows in one of his papers, it's not always, uh, or also mentioned in the previous talk, right? It's not always clear um, still which of these options um, you want to have for a given system because they can be, um, these continuous sensitivities can be unstable. Now for the qubit, um, let's choose, choose the task to prepare the excited state all the time. So this North Pole basically of the blosphere, starting from an arbitrary initial state. So the first observation which you can make, right? Is that this learning process for updating the controller is basically very smooth, right? Compared to typically reinforcement learning trajectories. And then we see here the fidelity as a function of these time steps at which we compute the loss function. Um, in the solid blue line, we have the mean fidelity over a bunch of trajectories. And the uh, blue band here is the standard deviation of this. And um, in the black solid line, we have the specific case when starting from the ground state and preparing the excited state. Now, Note right that when you reach, so these are the corresponding control and, and uh, drive values. And note that if you, if you have um, here steps above 50, basically the drive is just switched off because then you have reached your target state, which is an eigenstate of the drift Hamiltonian. And so once you have reached the state, you just pick up an overall um, global phase. Now the control strategy in this case, right, can be quite easily understand in terms of on, on the BLOS field. So we have here basically the vectors indicate how a state at a given um, at this position of the blob sphere would evolve infinitesimally when you choose a control drive and the control drive values are the color code. And then the yellow dots here indicate how one state would travel around the blob sphere to reach the target state. So this strategy can be quite easily summarized, right? At, um, in terms of considering on which side of this blob sphere you are, you rotate in one or the other direction. Now, this control scheme is not yet very realistic, right? Because it assumes that you can have this closed feedback of the quantum state at each point in time. And so um, what you actually want to have is some kind of measurement, right? But the me measurement will affect your quantum state. So to achieve this, well, still a closed loop feedback, which you want to have to counteract noise, for example, um, you actually want to go to some open system, right? So you want to your before closed system qubit, you want to place it into some kind of cavity which you can measure. And this here is called a homodyne detection setup where basically, well, you, you have a coupling of this qubit field to some outgoing mode which you measure and this gives rise to some current. And this current actually carries information about the sigma x measurement of this qubit state and well, has a typically time trajectory as given here. And the information of the sigma x is however drawn by, the, by some white noise term. So, 
there are then for this open system basically two different or at least two different control alternatives. The first one would be to have this current J to filter it to get again the state at a given time, feed that back into the controller, and then map with the controller again the state to the control drive value. Or the other option, or one of the other options would be to take just these um, well current measurements, feed them to the controller, and let the controller also do the filtering and map it to the drive values. Now, note that the measurement I said right affects the state of the qubit and so instead of the Schrödinger equation actually the state of the qubit inside the cavity is then described by a stochastic differential equation so which is this kind of multivariate stochastic differential equation with a scalar noise term in written in the ETO sense and the important thing to note here is maybe that still given all current measurements and all drive values which you chose you can still deterministically determine where the state of the qubit um, is at a given time now, from the learning scheme perspective, not too much things change actually, right? So instead of having an ODE solver, you have to take an SDE solver, which of course um, complicates the things quite a bit because you have different kind of stability diagrams and so on. And also, you have to use the SDE joints. And from the right from the box which goes in the controller, either you suppose that you have this filtering module or you take the the measurement values of the currents. Now. But let's do first the, the easier task, right? So we suppose or derive some kind of filtering module. And so the controller still in every step of the solver basically maps the quantum state um, to a control drive value. And what we see here, right, is again, this fidelity as a function of time. And so also in this case of this monitoring, we reach uh, pretty high fidelities. And note that in this case, actually the, the control fields cannot be switched off once you are close to the excited state because um, it will just start to, well, so, so the measurement leads to a decay of the um, qubit. And so you have to constantly counteract this, um, and this evolution. Right? And so what we can also show, right, that this limit on the fidelity is actually not something very fundamental, but it's just given in terms of the well, decay rate um, of the cavity and this intrinsic level splitting. So you can easily um, further tune up this um, well, the fidelity, right, and, and reach larger values here. Now, let me just very quickly um, also come to the feedback of this homodyne current. So for the homodyne current, right, um, you feed back into the, to the controller um, some record of the homodyne currents at, at, during the evolution of this stochastic differential equation and uh, the last measurements. And then you ask the controller to map this information to the, to the next drive value. And in this case, we even did it a bit more complicated for the controller because um, instead of doing this in, well, e at each time of the controller step, we assumed a piecewise constant control drive. So we only updated the steps at the, these time points where the loss function is also computed. And what you see here, right, is that still um, you reach the large fidelities not as quickly as before because you first have to get some information of the, from the current measurements to, well, pinpoint where your state actually lives on the block sphere, but then you also reach pretty um, large fidelities in, in that case. Um, now with this, let me already come to, to my conclusion. So I hope I convinced you that this differential programming framework allows um, for this automatic design of feedback control protocols for like ordinary and stochastic um, quantum dynamics or in general, like ordinary or stochastic differential equations. And the main central idea is to use this um, gradient information obtained by a joint sensitivity methods, um, which then allows for efficiently train your, your parameterized controller. And I haven't talked too much yet about um, the versatility, right? But you can imagine for the qubit, it's quite easy to come up with this kind of handcrafted control um, strategies. But for more complex quantum systems or differential equations in general, it's not so easy to design these control functions um, by hand. And as a very interesting outlook, so what we plan to do in the future, right, is to combine this um, control optimization basically with parameter estimation to realize something like controlled sensing of um, quantum parameters. And well, with this, I want to thank uh, all my collaborators um, who contributed to this work and also um, my mentors from last Google Summer of Code project. And the code basically um, well, can be found in these repositories and documentations. Uh, thanks a lot for, for your attention.